You want to know what happened? I'll tell you. I was betrayed, stabbed in the back. I'm in here and Arnora's out there, living in my house. This is the story of two sides of the coin, a dark tale of treachery and revenge, taking place in the Nord city of Bruma during the events of Oblivion. When entering Bruma from the East Gate, we look to seek solace from the night's frigid frost and rest a spell in the comfort of an inn. Heading up the main thoroughfare and descending some stone stairs, we find ourselves out front of Bruma's premier drinking establishment, the aptly named Dural View, which boasts a gorgeous vista of the mountains outside the gate. Entering the tavern, we happen upon some town gossip between the Dural's bouncer and resident cook. Greetings, son of Skyrim. Poor Arnora. Seems her boyfriend, Jorunder, has stolen some gold from her and left her penniless. Now he's in jail and she's destitute. Curious, we approach the bouncer and he greets. I'm Logvar. Hafid pays me to stand around and keep things quiet. Nice to meet you, Logvar. I couldn't help but overhear this Jorunda character is in a bit of trouble. Arnora and Jorunda were once a happy couple, but that's over now. I hear that he took all of their money and stashed it after he committed a robbery. He was going to skip town on Arnora but got arrested before making good on his escape. Now she has no money left at all, poor thing. This then initiates the quest two sides of the coin. Be seeing you. Feeling for poor Nora and her plight being betrayed by her lover. Deciding to pursue the rumor, our quest log then reads, I've heard that Anora Aurea of Bruma is looking for some help recovering some money that was stolen from her. I should make my way to her house and see if I can help. Following the single-story houses lined on the southern wall, we then find Anora's house behind the chapel, considerably more sizable than the previous abodes. Entering her house, she intercepts us at the door, demanding, What do you want? Before responding, we take quick inventory of the Imperial Spell Sword and see that she's wearing light brown linens, a brown shirt, but more impressive is the jewel around Anora's neck. However, Anora is in no mood for gawking as she impatiently chides. Can't you see that I'm upset? Attempting to smooth things over, we can say, Look, I apologize for barging in. I actually heard about you and Jorunda, and you were having money troubles due to the fact he swindled you. I felt really bad, and I thought maybe I could help. Our affairs are none of your business. I don't know who you are, and you think I'm going to talk to you about my ex-lover? The Imperial openly scoffs at the offer to help from a complete stranger, and somewhat fairly, we need to raise her disposition to at least 60, in which she will say. All right. Handsomely done. A pleasure doing business with you. Lacing up palm with septums, Honora is far more amenable to having a chat about a disgraced lover. I suppose I can trust you with this information. After all, if you can help me recover my stolen gold, you may find yourself earning some of it. Wait, you're offering me to earn some of your stolen gold? What are you getting at? I know what you've heard, all about Jorunda and his run-in with the town guard. Well, let's just say it isn't exactly all true. I may have let a detail or two leak out to entice someone such as you to assist me. Until you agree to my scheme, I don't want to say more. All I can promise is that you'll be making a lot of money. Are you in or are you out? We are then presented with two options or two sides of a coin. With our intuition's alarm bells ringing, we can say, mm, this sounds shady. I'm out. Suit yourself, but I have a feeling that you'll be back. A quest then updates as we go to leave and Anora confidently assures. You'll be back. The mission log then reads, I've spoken to Anora, but it sounds like she wants me to do something potentially illegal. I've told her I'm not interested. It sounded like she'd welcome me back if I changed my mind. True to her word, if we approach Anora again, she purrs. I knew the lure of gold couldn't keep you away long. Succumbing to intrigue, or perhaps the lure of gold, we can agree to Anora's previous terms and say, Okay, keep talking. I'm in. Smart answer. Here's the deal. Jorunda and I have had a rocky relationship at best. Against my will, I've been dragged all over Cyrodiil helping him commit petty crimes. I wouldn't say we're thieves. I mean, we've stolen things, sure. But we've never stolen that much at one time. Just enough to keep us going. That is until last year. 
Jorunda started to take risks and began robbing more dangerous targets. Not just lone merchants, mind you. I'm talking about the bigger scores, like estates and tax shipments. I begged him to stop, as I knew that his capers would one day lead to violence. He just threatened to hurt me if I got in his way. I think the gold changed him, I really do. He wasn't the man I met seven years ago. The few times I tried to say something, he'd strike me or push me away. I began to become frightened of him. So you're telling me you're petrified of an ex-lover who is now a criminal that robbed you and you're actively scheming against him. Tell me, what does this have to do with me? Our last score was a tax shipment being delivered to the Imperial City. We robbed it, and in the midst of the chaos, Jorunda killed a guard. I was mortified. We snatched up the gold and holed up in the mountains. He said if I breathed a word of the murder to anyone, he'd kill me. I was terrified of him at this point. Two days later, the Bruma City Guard traced us to our makeshift campsite. I was off gathering food, but Jorunda was captured. Served him right. When I went back to the site later, the gold was gone. He'd moved it! What I need you to do is go to the Bruma Castle dungeons and speak to him for me. Convince him to tell you where the gold is and then we split it. There's something off about Anora's story that we can't exactly put our finger on, but we know if we do speak to Jorunda, the missing piece of the picture will become clearer, or he is actually insane and will put a death mark against us. Regardless, we decide to probe just a little bit further before we leave for Castle Bruma and ask Anora, I know you've probably been hidden away, but what do you think of the city of Bruma since you've spent a bit of time here? I can't help myself. I'm just a sucker for well-heeled men. That Ola, for example, at the tap and tack. He's dreamy. And successful, too. Right. Doesn't sound like the words of a terrified woman who would swear off men for a while, but I guess people can deal with trauma differently. We definitely need to speak to Jorunda before we do anything else. He's not likely to just come out and tell you, so get creative. If we ask the Imperial Seductress for a final piece of advice, she just scorns. Until you get some information from Jorunda, I don't have anything else to tell you. About facing, we leave the Imperial's abode and head towards Castle Bruma, a quest log updating. Anora told me about a particular crime that she was forced to help her lover, Jorunda, commit. They stole some gold and buried it, but Jorunda was arrested. When she returned to the hiding place, the gold was gone. Jorunda must have moved it. Now she wants to recover the money. I should go to Bruma Castle Dungeons and speak to him. Wasting no time at all, we descend the stairs of Bruma's dungeon, finding the prisoner's cells at the southern hallway. However, unfortunately for us, it is locked. Not looking to spend time in a cell, instead we speak to the jailer who says, Tidings, citizen. What seems to be the problem? I'm actually looking to visit a prisoner. Jorinder is his name. What a bother. Don't be too long about it. I got to stay with you, so there isn't any funny business. Heeding the guard's warning, we head behind him to the cells below as he unlocks the door. No touching the locks! The guard then follows along behind us, incessantly reminding us of the rules. In the center of the dungeon, we find a couple of tables that are adorned with various tools. Implementations, it seems, for torture, with lashings of fresh blood splattered about. In the eastern cell, we find the only inhabitant, Jorinder, who dismisses. I don't know who you are, nor do I care. All I know is that I want you to leave. Hastily attempting to persuade Jorinder with the guard behind us, we say, Listen, Jorinder, I'm here to talk to you about that stolen gold. Onora actually- I'm not talking to you about anything. You're an outsider. I bet you're trying to trick me into telling something and the guards put you up to it. No, it wasn't the guards, it was- That fetcher of a guard, Terelius, is always trying to be sneaky. Well, you can forget it. Tell him it isn't going to work. With that, Geronda quickly dismisses us. No touching the locks! We look around for this Tyrellius, but there's nobody but the jailer who reminds us. Don't get too close to the prisoners. And so we make a final bid to gain Jorinda's trust to no avail. I don't know who you are, nor do I care. All I know is that I want you to leave. Nice try. 
I haven't got all day. With both Jorinder and the guard dismissing us, we have honestly hit a roadblock. And so we leave the dungeons once more and head back to Anora to see if she has a plan B. Entering Anora's home, we find a stark contrast to Jorinder's situation in the dungeon as she's feasting on a sumptuous meal by a warm fire. Looking up, she questions. Did that fetcher give you any information? Fetcher. Such a term of endearment. Look, Anora, we kind of hit a snag. Did you pry any information out of him? Jorinda was fixated on some belief that we were in cahoots with a guard named Tyrellius. Typical. So typical. His stupid paranoia that everyone's a spy and out to get him. I don't know what to suggest. Seems the only way he's going to tell us anything is if you end up in jail with him. Right, but see, if I'm in jail with Jorinda... How am I meant to get said gold outside of jail? We have to get him to tell us about the gold. Use any trick you can. I guess we can commit a minor crime and that won't be a big deal and we'll see if we can get him to talk. He's not likely to just come out and tell you, so get creative. Having our Nora bark orders at us between mouthfuls of food from the comfort of a dining room table as we run back and forth like a deranged errand boy. We're starting to understand why Jorinder doesn't seem to trust anybody. Not Honora or especially the guards. Congruently, our quest update saying, Jorinder refused to speak to me. He said that he doesn't talk to outsiders. I think he's referring to the fact that I'm not a prisoner. Sounds like the only way to get him to talk is by getting arrested. Brainstorming the best way to commit a crime without the guards utilizing their torture devices on us, we then see that the jailer has his own ink pot and feather to write with and think, well... He's probably not going to kick us to we pee blood, but definitely throw us in the tank for a night if we, uh, if we throw his writing implementations on the floor. Drop it, you s- It's all over, lawbreaker. Your spree is at an end. I'll take any stolen goods you have. The next move is yours. Pay your fine, or I'll haul you away. We can tell this jailer isn't a bad sort, just a stickler for the rules, and for a whopping bounty of one gold we say- Actually, uh, I think I want to do the time in the cell. Serve your time peaceably and pay your debt to society. Although there are five cells, luckily we're tossed in with Jorinder. And a quest update saying, I've committed a crime and been sent to jail. Perhaps now I can convince Jorinder to tell me about the stolen gold. As we amble over to Jorinder, a third party equally interested in the gold approaches. You've got nothing to lose, so why not just tell me and save us both a heap of trouble? Yeah, sure. And I suppose I just end up rotting while you spend it all? <laughs> Forget it. You're gonna end up rotting here anyway, you idiot. Look, you horse's ass. I never trusted city guardsmen. Never. So I'm definitely not gonna start trusting you, Terelius. Suit yourself. Enjoy your stay. If we attempt to have a word with Tyrellius, he simply barks. I don't talk to inmates. Now shut up and don't bother me. After that brief exchange, we can tell why Jorindo's not a fan of the guards and also can discern that it's probably his blood on the table and floor that Tyrellius has extracted during his interrogations. With all this in mind, we attempt to appeal to Jorindo's hate of authority and also, even though we are clearly imperial, Ham up a bit of, uh, non-existent Nord ancestry. By the way the guards tossed you in here, I can see you're no friend of theirs. You're damn right I'm not. I hate those guards. I just robbed one and got sent down here. Damn bootlickers. I wish I could steal more of their gold just to see their stupid faces. <laughs> Skyrim belongs to the Nords. I suppose I can trust you. In fact... Maybe you can help me with a bit of a problem, and make some money for yourself in the process. I'm in here for the long haul. They got me for murder, even though I didn't do it. And once the Count makes a ruling, there's no way it's changing. I owe all of this to that heartless, treacherous witch, Arnora. Oh, she sounds like a real heartless witch, all right. What did this Honora do to you, brother? You want to know what happened? I'll tell you. I was betrayed. Stabbed in the back. 
I'm in here and Arnora's out there, living in my house. Ah, we were doing petty crimes all over Cyrodiil. Small scores. Ten gold here, twenty-five there. Nothing big enough to have them investigate you. Then along comes Arnora with a plan to waylay a tax shipment headed for the Imperial City. We're talking serious gold, complete with armed escorts. I told her she was crazy, but she insisted. Women have a way of getting men to do what they want. So we did it. We ambushed the shipment. In the process, Arnora killed a guard. I told her to be careful and just knock them out, but she didn't listen. We then buried the gold in the woods. Then she disappears to get supplies. Suddenly, the campsite gets raided by the Bruma City Guard. There's no way they could have found us. Well, there's no doubt she tipped them off. But I was one step ahead. I had moved the loot while she was away. <laughs> My final revenge. Or was it? I don't like the way you're smiling at me. What are you getting at? I'll tell you. I want Arnora dead. That's right, I said dead. She took my life away, and now I want hers taken as well. You do this for me, and you get the gold. All of it. All I need is proof is that damn amulet she always wears. Show that to me, and the money is yours. We can't believe the dark turn this quest has taken. These two really are two sides of the same coin. We can then ask, is there, uh... Any other way that I can get my hands on this stolen gold? You want the gold? You bring me Arnora's amulet after she's dead. Finally, a chance for revenge. Like any good breakup, we have two parties telling two polar opposite stories, painting their ex-lover as the villain. Before we serve our time, we attempt to speak to Geronda once more, but he dismisses. Until you get out of here and I see an amulet, we have nothing more to say to each other. With such a heavy decision lying on our shoulders, perhaps the best thing we can do is serve our time and sleep on it. The stiff floor in the rat-infested cell has left us minus negative one to block, but other than that, not too much worse for wear. Leaving the castle in the cold of night and making the mistake of doing so in our prison fatigues a quest and update saying Jorinda had a completely different take on what happened with Arnora. He says she turned him in hoping to get the gold for herself, but he had moved it. He's furious and wants revenge. Jorinda then offered to give me all of the gold if I kill her. All I have to do is show him her amulet. Inside Anora's home, or should I say, Jorinda's former home, she greets us making light of our new attire. Welcome back to the world, convict. <laughs> Having a jolly old chuckle to herself, Anora heads downstairs to discuss our arrangement. So, were you able to find out about the gold or not? Well, we did meet Gerunda and spent some time with him in a cell. How could you stand sharing a cell with that imbecile? It's funny you mention that. Gerunda told us all about the stolen gold and how it was your fault that he's behind bars. So he told you another one of his tall tales? I hope you didn't believe him. What's he got in store for me? He sent you to kill me, is that it? What if there was another way? What if he thought I was dead, but I wasn't? Then he'd tell you the location of the gold. What did he need as proof? Geronda actually did request as proof that big, beautiful amulet draped around your neck. That fetcher. He knows this is the only heirloom I have left from my family. Only he would stoop so low. Look, I know you could just kill me where I stand. But what if I gave you the amulet and you bring it to him? Then he'd say where the gold stashed. You kill me here and now. And as far as the town guard is concerned, it's a crime. So you make your choice. You want to do it my way or Jorunda's? This is where the quest diverges completely, and we can choose to side with Arnora and give Jorunda the necklace, or Jorunda's way 
and simply kill Honora and take her family heirloom from her corpse. First, let's explore the latter, much to Honora's dismay. Then prepare for the fight of your life. If I fall, you'll just end up rotting in jail with Jerunda. Either way, no gold for you! Unfortunately, we underestimate Honora's ability to defend herself as she quickly casts invisibility and a wicked lick of lightning taunting. Let's get this over with! Swinging wildly, we accidentally hit a killer instead of Honora. This is the part where you fall down and bleed yeah. Ironically, it was Honora's taunt that was vital for our blade to find its mark. Dazed, our second strike has a full limp and a sickening thud. <laughs> our quest and updates reading... I've slain Arnora. I should take the amulet off her body and bring it to Jerunda. Wasting little time, we locate behind us a minor detect life spell and potion of cure poison. It's worth noting that Arnora's house is full of petty junk and not really worth exploring. So instead, we search her body and find on Arnora her amulets worth 35 septums, her clothes, a loaf of bread, her chest key and house key, 15 gold, Knowing the guards will be in hot pursuit, we forego ransacking her house any further and leave, opting to visit Jerunda as quickly as possible in the prison once more. Entering the cells, we find, thankfully, Tyrellius is off duty, so we cautiously turn to Jerunda and say, The deed is done. Show me the proof. Oh, the proof you want. What would you say if I showed you this big, beautiful blue amulet? <laughs> <laughs> She fooled you, but good. This isn't her real amulet, but a clever fake. The true amulet has a red stone. Clever girl. I taught her everything I knew. Too bad she's turned that knowledge against me. Come back when you have the real thing. Well, well, well. Mayroon's deadly donger. We've been had. Dodging the guards once more, we're inside of Honora's house, and as promised, it's full of junk. What you'd really expect from a life of petty crime. Cursing Honora's still fresh corpse by the fireplace, we then remember her key that we had taken off her, and it opens a chest by the side of her bed. Inside is Honora's true amulet. Well, worth 150 septums, looking like the Amulet of Kings and probably the only piece of jewellery or even item that Honora owned worth anything. And we wonder if she did indeed inherit it or she just decided that she loved that piece of jewellery and carried a fake one around to make sure that nobody would pilfer it from her in some ironic twist that Honora would definitely deserve. Making our way back to Jerunda for the upteenth time, we decide to put the amulet in full display to prove to him once and for all that the macabre deed has been done, plus we look really smart in our prison garb. Show me the proof. This garners the exact giddy reaction from Jerunda that we expected. Two amulets? One of them must be a fake. Clever girl. Taught her everything I know. Good thing you saw through her ruse. So she's dead, eh? Ha ha! Finally, finally someone has wiped that stupid smug grin off her face. <laughs> good, good. Well, you did your part of the bargain, now I'll do mine. The gold is buried outside the walls of Bruma, near the north gate. Goodbye. I don't expect to be seeing you anytime soon. If I were you, I'd get out of Bruma fast before the guards catch on that she's dead. Now with the secret location of the gold in hand, we can go and collect. We try and speak to Jerunda once more, but... Sorry, I'm too busy counting the number of rat droppings in my cell. It appears now that his vengeance is sated, our business has been concluded. And so with ostentatious amulets still draped around our neck, we rush towards Bruma's north gate with high hopes of finding Jerunda's hidden treasure. And our quest log updates accordingly, reading, I've shown Honora's amulet to Jerunda. He revealed the location of the treasure as being buried outside of the town wall. And we see we don't even have to follow cryptic verbal instructions, but instead is marked directly on our map. Once exiting the safety of the city walls, we see to the north the path that leads the Cloud Ruler Temple. And just to the northeast, off the path, a pile of rocks, and out in the blatant open, a chest. 
A part of us is dumbfounded that Jerunda left his loot out in the open, but another more realistic part of us expects this completely. Once opening the chest, our quest updates reading, I found the treasure that Jerunda concealed outside the walls of Bruma. Inside the chest is Jerunda's quote-unquote big score, which comprises of some fairly cheap jewelry, two randomized skill books, a little bit of gold, and some semi-precious stones. Not exactly a world-shattering score, and Jerunda honestly would probably have been better off ferreting out Anora's amulet and selling that on the market versus all the trouble that he went to. This does indeed conclude Jerunda's side of the quest, but we can visit Jerunda a final time in his cell, though he has moved across the room, and although his life is arguably over, he seems pretty happy with our exchange. Yes? Maybe I'll never see the sun again, but neither will our Nora. Well, whatever keeps you warm at night, my friend. With the rats in the cell. Speaking of Arnora, instead of killing her, let's explore what happens when we choose the other side of the coin, and opt to leave her alive, saying, fine, we'll do it your way. I knew you'd make the smarter decision. Good. Here's the key to the chest by my bed. Inside, you'll find the amulet Jerunda wants. Take my amulet to him. Get the gold and bring half of it back here to me. If you don't come back, I'll let the guards in on our plan. You'll be hunted all over Cyrodiil. You don't want that, do you? I don't think so. Good luck. Anora, striking her deal, then willingly bequeaths us with the key to her chest. But before we head off on this familiar expedition, we can ask, why don't you seem surprised Trewinda wanted you dead? I'm not surprised at all that he tried to have me killed. That's his way. Always the traitor and the coward. Wow, that's a lot of venom. So tell me, where do you think that he stashed the gold? My guess is he buried it somewhere close to town, or even in town itself. Believe me, I've looked. No luck so far. Looks like she's never taken two steps off the beaten path. Before we leave, Honora gifts us a final threat. I warn you, don't cross me. That is, before crawling into Jerunda's old, nice, comfy bed without a worry in the world, because supposedly if we betray her, she will put the guards on us. Little does she know that Tyrellius himself is looking for the gold, and she may want to be a little bit careful before she shares any information with the town's guard. And so, with familiar amulet draped across our neck, this time the correct amulet the first time, we approach Jerunda in his cell once more, who eagerly awaits our return. So, she's dead, eh? Ha 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 ha! Finally! Finally, someone has wiped that stupid smug grin off her face! Ha ha ha! Good! Good! Well, you did your part of the bargain, now I'll do mine. The gold is buried outside the walls of Bruma, near the North Gate. Goodbye. I don't expect to be seeing you anytime soon. If I were you, I'd get out of Bruma fast before the guards catch on that she's dead. Ostensibly, it feels like this quest is just playing out exactly the same as it had the first time. Jerunda has indeed revealed the location of his treasure and it's marked on our map. However, as we exit Bruma's north gate and head just off the beaten path towards the Cloud Ruler Temple, as we begin to approach the stashed treasure we hear to our left, what's that? Tyrellius! Indeed, somehow the Guardsman has tracked us here. Now, we can try attempt stealth, but Tyrellius, once we get into proximity of the treasure, will always be able to find us regardless of our stealth abilities. Thus, we head to the loot and try and make our escape, but a pop-up reads, I'll need to deal with Tyrellius before I open the chest. Running out of options, we draw our sword and see what he has to say. I'm here for Jorunder's gold, and you're my only loose end. I've been hoping to get someone in his cell and loosen his lips, and then you showed up. You really should be more careful when you talk in the dungeons. The sound tends to carry. Jorunder's such an idiot. I've taken care of Nora. She won't be around to point the finger, and Jorunder's not going anywhere for a long time. That just leaves you. Tyrellius then draws his sword, and we're barely able to block his first attack. <gasps> Tyrellius then swings wildly and we realize the guard came without his shield. Ah! Wow, 
Tyrellius must have had some Ultima blood because he went down like a sack of potatoes. A quest then updates saying I've killed a corrupt guard named Tyrellius Logellus near the stashed loot. Apparently, he had overheard my conversation with Jorunda in the Bruma Castle dungeons and wanted the gold for himself. I think he's also killed our Nora. I can now uncover the gold unhindered. Sheathing our sword that we miraculously didn't have to use, we search for Tyrellius' body and see blood spattered on a nearby rock. His corpse is handily covered by long grass and searching his body, we find some gold and his chainmail armor, as well as, just by his legs, his silver longsword. Too bad he didn't have that shield. Now sporting a suit of chainmail and out of our prison uniform, we can again check Jorinda's loot, though it should be noted it is exactly the same if we had killed our Nora. However, our quest update saying that we should go check if Tyrellius indeed had perished, Jorunda's ex-lover. Entering the Imperial's absconded estate, we do find Tyrellius was indeed true to his word, as Anora is splayed out on the floor just near the front door. On her person, we find her standard clothes and nine gold. Looking around her home, we see that it doesn't look like there was a struggle at all. Tyrellius must have caught her by surprise. A journal then updates saying, I found Onora's body in her house. Tyrellius has indeed killed her. I should probably leave before the town guard thinks I had something to do with it. On the bright side, all of Jorunda's gold is now mine. Exiting our home, we fear we've been made by the local guard, but instead, he simply greets. Hi there. Although we're above suspicion for now, it's only a matter of time before we're made and the guard recalls he saw us exiting Anora's home after she was murdered. Lucky there's not any warm days in Bruma to expedite her corpse beginning to become ripe to the noses of more curious neighbours. If we feel at all if we feel at all guilty for betraying Jorunda to not only Anora, but obviously his secret to the guards, we can visit him a final time in his cells, to which he scolds. I'm not interested in speaking with you. Jorunda, I was going to set you up for half the gold and share it with Anora, but that snake Tyrellius intercepted us, and now they're both dead. So, you both tricked me, and now you're here to mock me. Fine, fine. I hope you were happy working with that deceitful wench. <laughs> I'm sure she tried to con you out of half the money. <laughs> Can't say I'm sad to hear about Torellius either. Good work, <laughs> good work. Jorunda then leaves us with a final parting piece of wisdom. She was an evil, evil woman. So that ends the dark tale. So that ends the dark tale, but the question then becomes, did Anora deserve to die? If we take into account that Anora would die no matter which side we took, and we know that she was lying in several instances, however, Jorunda, not exactly a victim, had not deceived us. It becomes clear to me personally, not killing Anora is the best option. Not only do you not incriminate yourself openly that you had murdered her in her home, but Tyrellius would then die too. Saving Jorunda, who arguably may have deserved to at least do a bit of time for his theft, but he would not suffer at the hands of sadistic guards hellbent on torturing Jorunda for the location of the treasure. But what do you think? Do you enjoy these Elder Scrolls lore plays? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And like and subscribe for more dark lore. Acquire a taste for rats too while you were in there. <laughs>